created for changes, chosen for greatness. All things are possible, be all you can be in Christ. Maximize your life. Welcome to Max Live on Spark Sunderland. This program is designed to show through the life of Bible characters that ordinary people can become great leaders. We explore time-tested principles of leadership for productive living. Let me start this broadcast this Sunday morning with a short story. Sometime in the 90s, a group of refugees fleeing a war zone, decided to hike over some of the most rugged terrain in their country. As they were about to leave, they were approached by a frail old man and a sickly mother who carried an infant. The leaders of the group agreed to take them along with the understanding that the men would take turns carrying the baby but that the mother and the old man will have to make it on their own. Several days into this journey, the old man fell to the ground, saying that he was too exhausted to continue and pleading to be left behind to die. Facing the harsh reality of the situation, the leaders of the group reluctantly decided to do just that and started on their way. Suddenly, the young mother placed her baby in the old man's arms and told him it was his turn to carry the baby. She walked away to join the group. It was several minutes before she allowed herself to look back, but when she did, she saw the old man stumbling along the trail with the baby in his arms. And the moral of this story is to show that when a human being is given a sense of purpose in life and begins to set goals to achieve that purpose, a new wellspring of strength, courage, and persistence springs up where there was none before. When anyone faces discouragement or becomes fearful or are too tired to go on, it is always due to a lack of motivation which is simply because they've either lost sight of their purpose or they need to find a new one. This morning, I want to uh, encourage you, dear listener, we'll be rounding up our uh, broadcast on the Bible character Nehemiah this week. And I want to uh, admonish you or encourage you to set goals to achieve your purpose in life. The goals we set are the things that often infuse us with energy, courage, creativity, and the stamina necessary to accomplish it. The old man, in the story I just narrated, was fortunate to have had his new purpose find him. This is rare, but not impossible. It happened to Nehemiah too, but you don't have to wait. You can find your own purpose and then stick to it. If you don't have a plan for your life, circumstances and pressures will provide you with a plan, which is not always the best. Our character for the past four episodes, the man called Nehemiah in Jewish history, he rose up as a captive slave to galvanize support and resources go and rebuild Jerusalem, a city that was without walls and defenseless. This man later became the governor of Judah. This story is a classic 
in inspirational leadership and it is found in the Holy Bible. Someone said this type of leadership or, or leadership in general is like, like beauty. It is hard to define, but you will know it when you see it. One of the basic commonalities of good leadership is a well-defined purpose. A good leader must know where he is going and must also be able to inspire others to go with him. The question you must ponder, dear listener, is, and which we all must ponder from time to time, is why am I here? What is the purpose for my life? Could it be that the world needs me now? I believe that everyone has a purpose, and when you turn to God, it is easier to find out why you are here. I'm here this morning with Theodora. Uh, Hello. I hope you've been enjoying our broadcast so far um, on this leadership principles that um, we've tried to expound from the Holy Scriptures in the book of Nehemiah, um, the last historical book in the Bible. Um, Nehemiah is a man who truly fascinates me, even in this day, because his life story really offers us a gold mine of leadership lessons and debunks many of our assumptions about who a leader is and what really makes a leader. Nehemiah worked with people. Some may think of a leader as someone aloof, independent, but really genuine leaders rarely walk alone. Leaders build teams, and that's what we saw with Nehemiah. Leaders work with people. And um, for us now, perhaps you, you, you like working with people and you're not even sure what that character trait is about, this amiability, affability you exude. But they are, they are indicators of a leadership character that you are able to work with people, you want to work with people. And um, that's what is actually lurking behind that affability. And um, if you're a follower, there's also the possibility that you can become a leader because a good follower will eventually learn to become a good leader. Uh, Nehemiah was just a slave. He was a servant in, a, in the king's palace. So he was a type of follower at that time. But then he rose by learning the principles, quietly observing and listening, we can assume, and to become a leader. Um, that we see and we are, we are learning from today. Uh, his teamwork was phenomenal to the extent that it took only 52 days to rebuild, to accomplish a task that would ordinarily have demanded more time and more hands. But he was organized. That's part of the character traits that, of a leader. You know, he had gatekeepers. They walked side by side. That cohesion, he brought about a good cohesion and unity. He did not allow anything to tamper with that unity. He safeguarded it. And that's one of the things a leader must do to ensure that there is peace, there is unity among the workers. And um, was very firm about his purpose, like Peter mentioned earlier about purpose. It's not enough to find that purpose. You have to be very firm about it. He was courageous. We talked a lot about courage in the last few episodes. He was courageous. He did not allow any form of discouragement to infiltrate the camp on the team. He was able to persevere in the face of opposition and resistance to his vision of rebuilding the walls of Jerusalem. And that's something we must know. These things will always be there as long as there are human beings on planet Earth. There will always be opposition. There will always be resistance. 
But a good leader is not going to give in, he's not going to capitulate and allow them to run roughshod over his dreams and his vision. Some even considered joining to build the wall as a task beneath them. You know, some people just wouldn't cooperate with the idea. They feel it's below them. And sometimes close people may not be able to see the big picture about mm. you. But like Nehemiah, you must learn to be undeterred by uncooperative attitude or discouraging spirit of others because they can't see what you see. Exactly, exactly. In fact, um, when we finish this study of Nehemiah, um, the next character we want to look at is Joseph. His journey from being a 17-year-old to becoming a, cele a celebrity. Dear listener, I want you to know that you too can be a leader. There is a psychology of leadership. It's, it's a mindset that you can intentionally develop. Most of what you need to be a leader is already inside you. You only need to practice and, and develop yourself. One of the very positive strengths of Nehemiah was that he was a loyal man. The king could trust him. If you, and I want to encourage you, if you're listening to me, to read the story of this man in, in, the, in the Bible. It's such um, a profound story, and you will learn a lot from it. In that story, it was the king that spoke to Nehemiah. It was not Nehemiah that went to speak to the king. And this is what prayer does sometimes. It brings us into divine connections. When we pray, prayer allows us time for reflection and critical thinking and being humble to ins receive instructions and directions from God. And I, I often tell people, if, if you are too busy to pray or think along with God, you are busier than God intended you to be. And you're already relying too much on yourself or your own resources. It was prayer that had prepared Nehemiah for the questions the king might ask mm -hmm. as he passed in flying colors. Very true. The king was not only happy to send him, he was also ready to fund the entire project. This radio broadcast is designed to inspire you to make the plans necessary to get the things you really want in life. I want to encourage you. It's so important to make a plan. It's easier to get there when you know where you are going. If you are listening to me, like we, uh, Theodore and I said, our next character we'll be looking at is a young man called Joseph. He was 17 years old when his journey began. But by the time he was 30, he was already like the prime minister of Egypt. That's like the, uh, saying somebody became the vice president of the United States of America at 30. And we're going to share that journey to let you know that age notwithstanding, God can still use you. You know, regardless of where you are now, there is something, there is a gift in you. There are things and resources in you that can lift you and make you all that you are destined to be. It is important that we discover in this character called Nehemiah his ability to build worthwhile and important relationships. And in one of our episodes, we said the first relationship you need to build is relationship with yourself. Mm -hmm. Relationship with yourself. Mm -hmm. A right attitude with carefully developed skills and a focused direction will equip you to have great relationship with yourself and relationship with friends going somewhere. Shopping with yourself. family, yes, with associates, with colleagues and with the community at large. Mm -hmm. Nehemiah was a man who was determined to create lasting change. You know, he was determined to create lasting change. And I believe, you know, dear listener, you're, you're listening uh, this Sunday morning. Uh, I wanted to know 
that you can be an agent of change. To create change, the first thing to do is you must raise your standards. Change what you demand of yourself. Change what things you will no longer tolerate. Decide what won't, what you will no longer accept. Decide who you aspire to become. Change your limiting beliefs. You know, nothing sets a limit over your life. Change what you believe. Who could have imagined that Nehemiah will even ask the king for what he asked for? But Nehemiah removed the limit. He removed the limit and he was bold enough to ask and he got everything he requested for. What you believe is like an unquestioned command controlling your understanding of what is possible and what is not. If you don't begin to develop a sense of certainty that you can and will meet new standards, even when sometimes it requires hard work, you may not achieve what you actually want. Prayer is one of those things that helps us to empower our belief, create a sense of certainty, and in a way, it is the force behind any great success throughout history. That's it. You see, in life, lots of people know what to do, but pe few people actually do what they know. Nehemiah provides us a role model who can teach us life principles for responding to issues in a practical way. He was not just hiding somewhere praying. When uh, After he had assessed the situation, critically uh, looked at it, looked at the solution, he took action. What is important for you today, dear listener, and for, for myself, the question I ask myself is, what am I going to stand for from now on? What decisions can I make today that can change my life and change my future? Because whether you like it or not, whether you know it or not, the decisions you make right now, every day, today, will shape how you feel today and who you become tomorrow. Yeah, the decisions, our lives are ruled and move in the direction of the decisions we make. The decisions are not the conditions of our life. Mm -hmm. It's what determine our destiny. And so your genetic advantage or disadvantage, your environmental advantage or disadvantage, your family advantage or disadvantage, your relationship, all those things will amount to nothing if you don't make the right decisions. And sometimes making the right decisions is a function of having the right company. Yes. Having people, that is why the, the power of mentorship, the power of discipleship in yes. church, yes. you know, a mentorship in business. Mm -hmm. Having people who have been there or people who are thinking. Riding you know, on the shoulders of those who have, who gone, have gone ahead. ahead. You know, and so please, dear listener, we even are from books, reading. Yes, reading, reading okay. about others, the stories the biographies, of others. Biographies, autobiographies. They just help you to know that you know what people have been in my situation, and they have succeeded, <laughs> and so there is no reason why. Even watching films, I've learned yes. a lot from. I mean, like we've mentioned in this program, Chicken the, Run. Um, Chicken <laughs> Run, we've talked Run with uh, the Walt Disney movie, mm -hmm. animation movie. We've talked about Shawshank Redemption. You know, just the leisure move moments, but there's still something to learn. Yes. Yeah. The decisions you make make the difference between being interested in something and being committed to it. Nehemiah was not just interested in rebuilding the walls <laughs> of Jerusalem, he was committed. Yeah. And so, dear listener, right now, today, you can make a decision to go back to school. You can make a decision to do an apprenticeship. You can make a decision to develop a skill. You can make a decision to take control of your finances. 
You can make a decision to spend more time with your children or your grandchildren. To exercise more, the, like me. To exercise more, to go back to the gym, take control of your health. The most exciting thing is that this power of decision is already with you now. Commit to achieving a result and cut off yourself from any other possibility or thought of failure. This was what Nehemiah did. You know, talking about chicken run, you know, and cutting yourself away from a thought of failure. Imagine chicken who desired freedom. And um, one of them said, there is hardly one in a million chance of us getting out of this farm. We can't fly. But the one, the, the, the leader amongst them, Ginger, said, if there is one in a million chance, then that means there's there is a possibility <laughs> for us to go. There's one chance. There's one chance. And he said, and we'll, we'll either it. die as free chickens or die trying. And that's what we call deadly commitment. Without a dream, life can just slip by. But a true dream is an inspiring picture of the future that energizes your mind, will, and emotions. That's what a true dream is about. A dream is a seed of possibility planted in the soul of a human being, which calls him to pursue a unique path to the realization of his purpose. That's a true dream. What is your dream? We mm. all have the capa capability to dream. You see little children, young ones, they, they are so creative when they are allowed to dream. And sometimes as we get older, because of environment and circumstances and maybe past disappointments, we tend to give up on our dreams. But from the story of Nehemiah, from being a captive slave born into slavery, he still had a dream. He allowed his dream to drive him, and he had results. Well, some people are hindered from their dreams because of past disappointment, like we said. But then, let's look at the right and wrong picture of a dream. Because we talk about dreams all the time. Is it a daydream? Distractions from current work, that's all all that a daydream is about? Is it a pie in the sky dream? Wild ideas with no strategy or basis in reality? Or bad dreams that brings worries and breed fear and paralysis? Because if it's a bad dream, then you, you are incapacitated. And that's not a characteristic of a leader. Courageous leadership will not accommodate that. Is it an idealistic dream? that the way the world should be if you were in charge without any basis, without any plan, without goals, without the passion to make it happen? Is it a vicarious dream? Dreams that we just live through others. Some people are just obsessed with others. Other people's stories, other people's makeups, other people's fashion. Is it a romantic dream? Believe that some person will make you happy? Your knight in shining armor will appear? <laughs> Is it a career dream? Believe that career success alone will make you happy? Which doesn't happen. It's not, we are not meant to live on just one thing. We've talked about teamwork. We've talked about galvanizing others. We've talked about the fellowship and the unity of working with others. Is it a destination dream? A belief that a position, title, or award will make you happy? Friends, success is not a destination. Greatness is not a destination. You just press on. Yes. You, are, you arrive and move on. You keep doing and making success progress. Is unending. It's unending. <laughs> and so destination dreams are not sufficient. Neither will material dreams. Believe that wealth or possession will make you happy. Far from it, friends. However, when we believe in our dreams, we can tweak it, we can fix it, we can change it, we try again, we don't give up on our dreams. Your marriage, your relationships, your businesses, where do you want it to go? What's your dream for your children? What's your dream for your career? What's your dream 
for your relationships? What's your dream for this city? Mm. What's your dream for this nation? There is something that each one can put in and press in to make it happen and glorious. And so I invite you, friends, having looked and listened to the stories, these character traits of Nehemiah, and seen the results that can come through pressing on and not giving up. Sharpen your dreams. Hold on to your dreams and you will fly. Um, it's important to know also that um, information is important. You know, when we begin to dream, it's important to uh, make sure we have, we try to access relevant information. Um, information is good for, is crucial to good decision making. So, listen to programs, listen to this program, <laughs> listen to other programs, attend seminars, you know, look for free courses and, 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 and so on and so skills. forth. Yes, yes. And also, um, many people are discouraged from dreaming by others. You know, don't allow people to hinder you from dreaming. Don't allow people to hinder you from seeing what you can become. And don't allow the uh, past disappointments and, and hurts and, you know, don't allow that also to prevent you from advancing into the future. Some people are not comfortable to settle into average. Be one of them. Don't settle for the status quo. I believe that the poorest of all men is not one without a penny, but one without a dream. True. Develop confidence in your dream. Decide to pursue what you really want. And I want you to know that whatever you focus on, you begin to attract to yourself. Go for it. Dreams can come true. true. You can get from where you are now in your studies, in your career, in your marriage, in your relationships to where you want or where you would rather be. But it's important that you determine what you would rather be first. Everyone faces discouragement at some point in life. We find that also in the latter part of studying the book of Nehemiah when he was opposed by Sambalat and Tobias and the other uh, people that were on ground there. Sambalat was the governor of Samaria and Tobias was his assistant. And of course, they did not want uh, what Nehemiah had come to do to succeed. And so they tried to discourage him. They tried to discredit him. They tried to ridicule him. But he refused to give in to their ridicule. I tell you, sometimes words hurt. Words hurt. Many people have withdrawn from exercising their gift and their talent because they have felt intimidated by abuse, by other people's opinions. And I want you to know from time to time, life will confront us with periods of, of darkness, periods of challenges, periods where we will doubt ourselves. But I want you to know, just like driving through a tunnel, if you keep going, you are making progress towards the light. If you just keep going, if you refuse to give up, if you will hold on to that dream, if you will trust in your instinct, if you will pray and trust God to help you, to lead you, those right connections will come. The right things will happen. The right relationships will develop. And you will break through into that which you have seen in your dream. I just want to encourage you that Nehemiah shows us that when tough times come, never lose sight of the good, even in the bad experience. 
Always remember the power of persistence. No one develops persistence in good times. We only develop strength when things are tough. So the fact that things might look tough is not an indication that you are a failure. No, the circumstances might look tough, but there's always something within you that is strong enough to overcome whatever opposition comes your way. Please don't, don't give up. One of the episodes we quoted uh, Winston Churchill and that his bulldog, um, you know, determination and, uh, you know, that pulled the United Kingdom and, you know, the spirit he, he, he infused Energized during, the, during, people. The, during the Second World War. I want you to please have that bulldog faith because persistence really pays. Persistence really pay, pay. Perhaps you might be going through disappointment or, or discouragement right now. Please don't give up. Don't stop. The darkest hour is just before the dawn. There's this American writer, Zen Gray, who said, and I like to quote, he said, These are the tests of true greatness to bear up under loss, to fight the bitterness of defeat and the weakness of grief, to be a victor over anger, to smile when tears are close, to resist disease and evil men and base instincts, to hate hate, to love love, to go on when it will seem good to die, to seek ever the glory and the dream, to look up with unquenchable faith to something ever more about to be. These things any man can do and so be great. Three things that are amazing about Nehemiah and most leaders that I know is one, they are able to see further than others see. Nehemiah was able to see the problem even though he had never been to Jerusalem himself, but he could imagine the solution in his head. And that's one of the other things that we have that God has given us that is... Um, you know, a, a part of God, the power of imagination. imagination. You know, vision comes when we, we combine that power of imagination with critical thinking and we begin to see a preferable future. And that is what um, stimulates the mind, you know, stimulates the emotions, creates the passion that we need to overcome some of these challenges. You find that also leaders, they see more than others see. Nehemiah knew that the world could be built and should be built. Even though he had never been to Jerusalem, he just knew. And before he left Shushan in, in the Persian kingdom, mm -hmm. he already knew what to ask for from the king. Correct. And so we must learn to see further, see more than others see. And also Nehemiah was able to see before others see. These are what leaders do. None of the neighbors around Jerusalem at that time wanted to see that wall rebuilt. And they, they conspired against him. They plotted against him. But he already had an idea because the Bible tells us that when he first got there, mm -hmm. he secretly went around the, the place. He assessed the work he needed to do. You know, he calculated the risk. You know, he thought through yeah. before he began to engage the people. Yeah. And so when the task was threatened with violence, he devised a strategy to defend the city and to keep the people working at the same time. So they are listening, regardless of whatever kind of opposition that might arise against you, never forget that each time you move forward, you are not only building, you are also fighting. I have found that many times when we face challenges, we tend to stop. And whatever the challenge, whatever the situation, it could be a financial situation, it could be a relationship situation, what happens is that we become so consumed by that difficulty that it becomes our whole life. We just, that's the main focus. We, we keep fighting this particular thing. But life is never meant to be one direction. Even while we face opposition and we face challenges and we, we are pushing through and we are fighting those challenges, we must keep building. One must not be done at 
the expense of the other. And so for Nehemiah, when the work he was doing was threatened, he devised a strategy to defend, but at the same time, he kept the work going. And so possibly you, are, you, you, you have a challenging situation. Don't stop self-development. Don't stop working on yourself. Don't stop building up. Don't stop attending those free courses. Don't stop looking for opportunity. Don't stop every attempt, every opportunity you have to advance yourself, to build yourself. Yes, the, the, the challenge can be there. You are defending it. You are, you are fighting. You are going through this, this particular problem. But every opportunity, develop yourself. That is what life is about. Life is both a battle and a building program. Don't focus just on the battle. Build up also. Because in the day of opportunity, what you have built up is what will answer for you. We must contest to conquer. It is the way life is. What Nehemiah did was to go about the task with the sword in one hand and the shovel in the other. Many times, if we are not careful, we are so busy fighting, you know, and, and uh, you know, be, be berating ourselves and, you know, feeling bad about what is happening and we forget to build. He did not do that. The gift God has given for us to build our lives, they are already in us. We must understand how to defend ourselves against those who will try to distract us or stop us. But we must also understand we must continue continue to build up strength, we must continue to improve ourselves, we must continue to learn more, we must continue to become the best that we can be. Let me just mention a few things about challenges before we, uh, before we uh, round up this program. Every challenge and every opposition that you come against is initiated to make you feel and it is targeted against your confidence. And the first thing to do is to refuse to fear. That's what Paul said in, in the book of Philippians. Refuse to fear. Refuse to fear. Now, challenges may come in, in, in different ways. It may come through people you know. It, it may come through the internet. It yes. could be cyberbullying. These are the realities these of are, our time. These are the realities, it yes. It could be social media issues. True. But never take anyone to heart. Never descend into hatred or anger or bitterness. Because, you know, sometimes you, you, you have to be... That is what I'm talking about, developing that inner strength. When you are reminded of your past mistakes, it is so that you can lose strength in the present. God is not holding your faults against you. In order to remain bold and fearless, always remind yourself of the love of God. Keep your eyes focused on what you are doing. That was exactly what Nehemiah did. That enabled him to finish that task that they had not been able to do for 90 years, you know. Yes. He did it in 52 in days. In 52 days, yes. And I'm praying, dear listener, as you're listening to me, that this morning you'll be fired up to go into this coming week filled with energy, filled with passion, seeing and knowing that what, whatever your dream is, it's not impossible. Whatever the challenges are, cheer up first. God is on your side. Ensure also that you are walking in love because nothing works without love. So in life will be provoked. You'll be provoked to respond, you know, in anger, to respond in, uh, in hatred, to respond in kind. But when you do that, you take the power from the hands of God. When you walk in love, when you are provoked and you respond with forgiveness, when you are determined to be a repairer and not a destroyer, when you are determined to be a, a builder and not a bulldozer, then you will find the entire universe will walk with you. God will walk with you. Resources and things will just click and things will just happen beyond your own ability, beyond your... You, can, you won't even be able to understand how or why it's happening. And that is what love does. Remember God also, is love. yes. Remember also, your challenge or position is not an affliction. So don't fall into self pity. 
always see every challenge as a sign of a promotion. A challenge means your star is rising. So whatever <laughs> difficulties you are going through now, the truth is, it's a sign that there is something great ahead of you. So dear listener, cheer up. Look up. Look up. <laughs> Pray. <laughs> Pray and the L best is yet to come.